Konnichiwa. My name is Maurice. Um, I work for the Serum Foundation. Um, what is Degos all about? If I would summarize it in three keywords, I would say blockchain, social impact, and energy. But is Lagos is not only a hackathon in Lagos, Nigeria in February 2020, focusing on decentralized energy solutions. It's a conference, it's an educational event, it's a hackathon, and it's even more. So who are we and what will we present to you today? Um, SMNTI from Uport Consensus um, and actually from Lagos will present you a little bit more about the Nigerian context for you to get a better understanding on how we got there. Um, Guillaume Ballet, core Ethereum developer, will tell you about the concept of East Lagos and its schedule. And Benjamin Onuoha, from who leads the African Blockchain Alliance, will tell you about how we will manage that this event will have an impact on the real world. So, let me leave the stage to you, Esa. Nigeria. Okay, so Nigeria is a very rich country. And when I say rich, I mean I'm talking about it in three with three aspects. The first thing is a lot of people do not know that Nigeria is the first place in Africa that crude oil was first discovered. And it's also the place in Africa that produce, that's the largest producer of crude oil and also with the largest reserves of crude oil in Africa. Two, Nigeria has a population of 200 million people. So it's the most populous black country. And the city of Lagos has 20 million people where I live. And that is like, so it's one of the largest cities in the world. And you can compare it with Tokyo, with New Mexico, with Mexico City. And in that same Lagos, there is a huge tech startup ecosystem, which is one of the largest ecosystems in Africa. And we have really talented, talented developers. I'm in Nigeria, I grew up in Nigeria, went to school in Nigeria, I have a Nigerian accent. <laughs> And I'm one of those talented developers. And regardless of all these things, there is an energy crisis in Nigeria. 41% of people that live in urban areas like Lagos do not have access to energy. And even if they do, they have maybe three to four hours a day. And 75% um, of people that live in the rural areas do not have access to energy at all. They don't even have power. And um, I'll give you more insight to that. I grew up in Nigeria, I was born there, went to school there, and all that. And as I was growing up, there was this term, like I said earlier, three to four hours of power, then the power goes off. Till the next day, or sometimes two days, five days, one month. It sounds very weird for some people that have always had power every day. And when the power comes up and I was a child, we used to say this thing, up nepa, but um, up nepa means like, um, the power holding company, the company that generates and distributes power, is called, the acronym is NEPA. So people would scream up, oh, NEPA, because for goodness sake, five days, no power. <laughs> <laughs> and then, when, and then, now that I'm, I'm older, children still scream up NEPA. So you can just imagine how long this energy crisis has, um, has existed and it's still there. And people that have power have to have, like, for me to do my job, I work for consensus, for me to do my job in Lagos, I have all three alternate power, um, sources of electricity so that I can work my teammates and they can tell you, but sometimes my power's gone off. We'll be on Zoom, my power's gone off, I'll join later. Okay. <laughs> now imagine how hard that is for me, like imagine the technical system, how hard it is for them to develop, to build something 
with those challenges. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so precisely, how do we make this happen? How do we build something? Uh, there's been a lot of experiments made in the, in the 80s, the 90s, where people were trying to bring, uh, you know, very well-intentioned people were bringing their uh, building, building uh, things that the locals didn't need, so they were very quickly ripped apart to, to turn into something else. So clearly, the, the solution is about making those people who, who have the problem tell us what they need. And we believe that blockchain can en enable that. I mean, um, this, is, uh, this is what the technology we build. We, we want it to be useful. And hopefully, Nigeria can uh, provide this, uh, this fertile ground for ideas. So we're going to uh, gather those people and provide a hackathon. But one of the problems that happen in a hackathon is even though uh, those, you have a lot of talented people and Nigeria certainly has a lot of them, uh, they don't necessarily understand blockchain, they don't understand energy, which is the program we focus on. Um, so we need to make sure that they have the right background. So we're going to bring uh, like experts, uh, professionals, we're going to have, uh, as part of a conference, of a greater conference, we're going to have the Prime Minister, sorry, not the Prime Minister, the Minister of Energy that is going to give a keynote. We're going to have the the German development agency that is going to bring experts to train those uh, those developers on uh, on energy solutions, and uh, of course we're going to bring uh, like community like the Ethereum community. We're going to bring blockchain knowledge. Um, so this is uh, the program of the of the event. Uh, we're going to start, like I said, with uh, with some training. Uh, we're going to make sure that those developers don't are not thrown in the cold water and then the, the hackathon starts and they code for three days and uh, at the end of it we, we finally, uh, we finally uh, select the, the winners. Um, oh yeah, one thing, so we, we bring a lot of, uh, of partners of course and uh, I forgot to say the GIZ, the German Development Agency, has a, uh, uh, a talk at DEF CON so uh, go, go attend them, the, the formidable people. And, um, and yes, uh, that's uh, actually not the end of the story because after, the, after the, the, the hackathon is done, we don't stop there. Hi everyone, uh, thanks for coming to our session. So, um, yeah, we want to make sure that um, the projects that the winning teams because it's such a big problem um, that AC has described, we want to make sure that the winning teams continue to evolve into sustainable projects that then continue to solve that problem. So um, we will be working with them to make sure that, um, to help them with partners like the GIC, um, there's a department of decentralization, I believe in Berlin. There are um, a whole lot of partners that are very interested in this so that the program or the project or the winning teams actually gets into being a sustainable project. Um, also, helping to point those winning teams or winning projects into other funding sources, um, you know, within the ecosystem like the EF, Gitcoin, even the UNICEF and a whole lot of other groups. So not just win a hackathon and then we move on and go on to the next, but no, they will go into sustainable projects. Um, and uh, just as a background also before that, there's been a lot of community development efforts in Africa. We've done a lot of meetups um, on Ethereum. We're running several developer programs, um, especially with Consensus Academy, to keep training developers. So a lot is going on in the ecosystem. So we're just going to build on that and also uh, continue with them into sustainable projects. So one of the examples of what we hope to come out of Eat Lagos, an example is a project called Ribbon Blockchain. It's totally unrelated, but stay with me. Maybe you'll see the connection. So it's a team gathering around Ethereum. Like I said, there's a lot of team um, and um, community development effort that has been done already in Africa. So this team just formed organically um, from different hackathons and meetups 
What they're trying to do is to use incentives to solve the public health adherence problem. Apparently, it's about a $1 trillion problem. So it's to incentivize practitioners, uh, health practitioners as doctors, nurses, um, health workers, and patients for healthy behaviors. And when these three groups are incentivized, um, you know, it's believed that the health system will be more efficient. Um, so we want projects or winning teams from EAT Lagos to be like this, that form organically, and um, this is a shining example, and they'll also be at EAT Lagos, so we invite you to come and see them there. Um, one last thing is uh, EAT Lagos has been working with a whole lot of groups. Um, Ethereum Foundation um, has been very kind to spearhead and drive this initiative. Um, the German Government Development Agency, GIZ, they have a solar mini grids project in Nigeria. So attendees and participants will have what we call a return on, what's that for us again? Return on experience. Return on experience. So being at the forefront of innovation where we will actually plug these winning teams and participants to an existing large scale implementation that's trying to solve a real problem. So GIZ has a solar grid um, project in rural areas that's adding a lot of value and we can only imagine what the scale is um, if we add the blockchain element and the innovation that the young people come up with and of course the ABA also working so I think I'll hand over to Maurice to wrap it up Here we have a little slide about the Team members of East Impact. East Impact is a legal entity we are currently setting up. It's a German nonprofit and uh, it helps us to empower East Lagos but also to help to incubate the winning projects. And um, afterwards, we are willing to organize more similar projects in the development world. So, East Impact, uh, East Lagos is the kickoff. Is impact. So we are reaching out to all of you, developers, energy engineers, entrepreneurs, sponsors, everyone who is interested. Um, we would love you to reach out to us. So how could you participate? It's very simple. We actually launched our website yesterday, eastlagos.io, you'll find all the relevant info there. And here is our Twitter account. On uh, the website you'll find a Riot chat where you can ask questions. And uh, applications for participants will open soon on the website too. So don't hesitate to catch us if you are seeing us around as we'll be here during the whole week. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention. We have like five minutes for questions. So, do we have some questions? Thanks, Benjamin. Um, yeah. I was hoping you might go into a little bit more practical examples of how the population in Nigeria, Nigeria are actually using maybe like Bitcoin or you know any other alternative uh, cryptocurrency in their day-to-day -day lives. Like 90% of my business is done in Nigeria. Uh, we're sponsors of DevCon the last three years. It's called BitCart, and uh, we liquidate gift cards uh, that actually people in Nigeria live on, and uh, we liquidate that through Bitcoin. So they, they survive on Bitcoin, and those customers uh, who are actually sharing these slides with right now uh, from Lagos who, you know, I guess there is a kind of bit of an educational gap, but they are very, very, like, they've adopted Bitcoin in a massive way. Um, I don't know, can you speak to anything, maybe Benjamin, can you speak to that, or the other lady who's, who introduced it? Yeah. Essay. 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 Yeah, so um, there's a lot of interest, uh, but there's a lot of crypto speculation, right, in Nigeria. I'm speculating on the crypto and the price. That is what they know uh, only. Um, and in my opinion, I mean, I speak for myself, I think that is toxic. It's not what the ecosystem needs to speculate on the price. We need to move into 
an era where people actually understand the technology and the power that it has and what they can build on it. So um, we've done a lot of work. We've done um, three or four or five, I don't know, Ethereum meetups in Lagos, two or three hackathons. So there is that awareness that, okay, this thing is more than just something I can buy at $5,000 and cash out at $10,000. With that as well that you said, there are a lot of scams too. So people equate Bitcoin with pyramid schemes. Because a lot of people say, oh yeah, you know, you put in this amount of money, you get cash out at this amount, and all sorts of products and services that they have. So when I told my mom, and I said Ethereum or Bitcoin, she's like, oh, don't work with those people. I'm like, why? She says, no, it's a pyramid scheme. I said, no, it's not a pyramid scheme. So those are the things that we're working very hard to change. Even within the Alliance, we are running a developer program. We always do blockchains with executives, with uh, also all sorts of people, open door sessions. We're also engaging, and funny enough, even regulators are also associating Bitcoin and crypto and blockchain as a scam. You know, so um, I don't know if that answers your question. There's a lot of work we've done, but there's an uphill task in terms of education um, and changing people's mind that this is not an investment. It's not something you buy and you sell at a certain price. It is not a pyramid scheme. It is not all of these things you're thinking about. It's a powerful technology that you can use to do a lot of things. And hopefully this, what comes out of this, will show people that this is not just crypto. There's so much more. And it can actually be used to solve real pains. And that's what we're hoping this will do too. Any other questions? Okay. Can we take maybe two of the questions and then we can wrap it up? Thanks. Yeah, you're picking up maybe on the some of the same question, I guess, but isn't like the in terms of the, the, the payment or, or form of currency where you have a competition with Naira with the highly high inflationary, isn't that already like a step ahead where you can like have a bigger opportunity to, to get to people? Apart from the speculation aspect of course, but still I mean in terms of uh, in terms of currency stability and stuff like that or how does, how does that like register people? So it's very difficult to move the night, especially for remittance and stuff like that. So there is an opportunity there. The other thing we're talking about is to have a broader um, blockchain week conversation. So um, we'll involve the regulators there and have that conversation. But yes, that is a big problem. The, the currency is very inflationary. You can't move it around. And it's a general problem in Africa. So that's why we need everybody to sort of have those broader conversations also. But yeah, the opportunity is there. The last question, I think we have one, two. Any more questions? Just a question about sponsorships. Um, can you speak to any of the sponsors that have come on board already and what kind of brackets you're looking at? So for now we're still on um, fundraising, but we have uh, some partners like the German development agency called GIZ. They are involving um, partners from the energetic sector, the German energetic sector, because they are very interested in having this return on experience, because you can try out things in Nigeria that you cannot try out in Europe. It's difficult to sell you uh, energy to your neighbor in Europe, but you can do that in Nigeria. And we'll be able to try out the developed solutions on these mini-grids in Nigeria, and this is very interesting for them. So we have some of them. We have also people from our ecosystem who are showing a lot of interest, like Gitcoin and others. Um, yeah, we are reaching out to a lot of people. So we have, from the sponsors, we have international organizations, we have our blockchain ecosystem and we have the energetic sector. So it's kind of a wide range. That's it. All right, thank you very much again.